Hello, Dr. Sammy here with Eastwood Animal Clinic. Thanks for watching, guys. And we're gonna try and talk about something maybe you're a little less familiar with. Today we're gonna to talk about anemias a little bit. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of patients with different versions of anemias, and we're gonna to touch on regenerative anemia and non-regenerative anemia. So, non-regenerative anemia is typically caused by non-regenerative anemia. We're gonna go back to regenerative anemia, sorry guys. So regenerative anemias are typically caused by traumas, something called DIC, IMHA, which stands for Immune Mediated Hemolytic Anemia. Basically, for one reason or another, red blood cells are being destroyed in the body. Uh, infectious diseases can do it, like severe hookworm infestations, which are GI parasites, tick infestations that can cause ehrlichia anaplasmosa most commonly in our area, but other tick diseases can also cause anemias. There are a bunch of other things that can also contribute. We're just touching on the little ones. So those are kind of some of the bigger causes for regenerative anemias, and the gist of a regenerative anemia means the body is still producing red blood cells even in the face of these issues. So that's different than a non-regenerative anemia. Non-regenerative anemia is a little bit more of a bigger problem in my opinion, because typically it's affecting bone or the kidneys. Those are gonna be the two major ones. And how do bones and kidney affect the production of red blood cells? Let me tell you. <laughs> so, red blood cells are produced in the bone marrow, and they get their signal to produce bone marrow from the kidneys. They release an enzyme called ureth urethropoietin, and that signal gets transmitted from the kidneys down to the bone marrow, and the bone marrow will produce more red blood cells. So if you have something that affects those two organs, that is a problem and that will contribute to an anemia. So bone cancer would be a big one. If you have cancer in the kidneys where that message isn't getting through, really severe kidney disease can also contribute there are a bunch of other things as well, but those are gonna be the two big major ones that I would look for in non-regenerative anemias, at least initially, and then work our way down the ladder. So, hope that helps you guys a little bit with anemias and some of the things that you can look for with regenerative versus non-regenerative anemias. A tip you can look for at home as a pet owner for across the board, most mammalian species, so our dogs, cats, guinea pigs, rabbits, ferrets, those things. You can do what's called a CRT and look at the mucous membranes. So what that means is if you have another patient, go ahead and push on their gum, lift up the lip and push on the gum and it should blanch, which means that pink color should go to white. And once you remove your finger in less than two seconds, that should go back to pink. If it's taking longer than that, Watch things very closely, and if it's more than four seconds, go see your veterinarian, please. That's a problem, and we need to work on that before we crash and burn, or at least eliminate that possibility. So mucous membranes are the mucous membranes in the mouth. Basically, that pink gingiva would be a way of thinking about it. Make sure they're a good pink color, not white or yellow. That'll indicate another problem. Just pay attention to that. It's something very easy owners can do at home to watch for some very severe problems. Sometimes it's a gradual change, sometimes it's a very quick change. But watch that guys, and I hope that helps you out a little bit, and we will see you around. Be safe, bye.